we're going to review the dehydration of an alcohol. There are two types of dehydration of an alcohol, intramolecular and intermolecular. We'll do the intramolecular first. Intramolecular just means within the same molecule. So what you're going to have, dehydration essentially means, just like it sounds, you're getting rid of water. So in an intramolecular, the both parts of your water molecule there's your hydrogen and your hydroxide group right there. They are coming from within the same molecule. So here I have my alcohol right here. There could be anything else attached to both of those carbons right here. But I have my hydrogen here and my hydroxide group right there. When those combine, those are going to make water. So when I remove water from my alcohol, that's why it's called a dehydration reaction. Well, if I remove that water, my carbons are still there and it would look like that. Now, if I look at both of these carbons, this carbon is only making three bonds and this carbon is only making three bonds. So they both need to make another bond and the hydroxide and the hydrogen are gone now. So the extra bond they're going to make is between each other right there, which means we're going to get a double bond or an alkene out of this. This should look a little bit familiar. This is essentially the reverse of the reaction we saw in the last topic where we were hydrating an alkene, starting with the double bond and adding water to it. Of course, your other product here is always your water just like that. So if we look at a real molecule right here, Okay, this right here is ethanol. We've got our two carbon chain right here. There's my hydroxide group that makes it an alcohol. These are the reaction conditions we need for a dehydration. We need the strong acid and the 180 degrees, the hot temperature right there. Now this is drawn out a little bit different like that. If you cannot see, where your water is coming from, you can go ahead and draw the complete expanded structure here for this alcohol. So there's that carbon and that carbon, and here is my hydroxide group. There's some hydrogens there, like there. Now it still doesn't look exactly like the one on the top because my hydroxide group is off to the right, but the same thing. Here is my hydroxide group. I'm going to change colors here and it is going to combine with a hydrogen on the carbon next to it. These two will come together to make my water. Okay, and then on the other side here, I'm gonna have my two carbons. That first carbon still has these two hydrogens on it. This carbon right here still has the two hydrogens on it. Okay, my hydroxide is gone. That went together with the hydrogen to make the water right there. Both of these carbons only making three bonds, so there's my double bond in between them, and there is my alkene. You could also write that, go back to the condensed structure, and your product would look just like that. There is your ethene right there. Okay, the other question that we could ask, and you have several, I'm just going to erase this so I have a little room here, in your textbook, questions that look like this along the bottom, where essentially they give you the alkene and ask you, what alcohol made that? So it's essentially just asking the same type of question in a little bit different way. So if I want to go backwards and I look at my alkene, essentially I'm going to look at where my double bond is right here, and that double bond is going to open up and that's where my water was removed from. So over here I would have my CH3, my CH, and now I'm just going to have a single bond between those two CHs, Oops. and then my CH3 right there. This is where my double bond was. That's where my water molecule is going to add. So I'm just going to draw bonds up from both of those carbons. On one of them, I'm going to dry a hydrogen. On the other, I'll dry my hydroxide. And that's where my water mo molecule was removed in those conditions. I told you there was two types of dehydration. The other was intermolecular dehydration. Intermolecular means two different molecules there. So in this case, my water molecule that's removed 
part of it's going to come from one alcohol molecule and the other part will come from a different alcohol molecule. Now intermolecular dehydration really only occurs to an appreciable amount in primary alcohols. Secondary and tertiary alcohols really do not, um, you don't get enough product out of there from an intermolecular dehydration so we don't need to worry about that. So in this case here is my hydroxide and it will combine with the hydrogen right there. Those two will combine and there's my water that's being removed from this. Now if I look at what's left, I have my carbon right there. That carbon is missing there. In fact, I'm going to remove that for now. It doesn't have anything right there. My other carbon on my other alcohol looks like that. So I removed the hydrogen from it. This carbon right here needs to make another bond because it only has three bonds. This carbon's fine, but this oxygen, oxygens like to make two bonds and it's only making one. So I've got an oxygen that needs to make a bond and a carbon that needs to make a bond. So they're going to bond together just like that. And that's your general bonding pattern. And we, in this case, make what we call an ether, another different functional group. And then, of course, we still have our water right here. Reaction conditions are the same here for an intermolecular dehydration just a little cooler temperature, 140 versus 180 right there. So for an example, here we have our ethanol right here, just like in the last, the intramolecular, but at a lower reaction condition right here. What's going to happen here is... Again, one thing that will look different in your textbook problems is it does not write out two ethanol molecules, but if you see this lower reaction temperature, think intermolecular dehydration, and you can imagine that there is another ethanol molecule that's going to react here. Okay, so we're going to get our hydroxide from one ethanol, our hydrogen from the other to make our ether. And there's your oxygen, and then it will combine with the other part of the other part of the alcohol, same alcohol here, so you have essentially ethyl groups on both sides of your oxygen. And there's your water molecule there.